Hello, here I am again with the class number 12 of the chorus Road to Victory, uh, which if you're watching this video for the first time, this, this, this series of uh, videos are based on my book uh, called The Road to Victory, Create Your Own New World. And this is the 12th class. So if you are watching this video now without watching the ones that came before, I suggest that you go back to those because you'll get a lot more out of it and a lot more understanding. We left off uh, in the last class with uh, step number five and uh, first principle number 22. This is 62 principles which are working tools so that you can think with these tools. And we ended off with number 22. Now we're going on with number 23. In this study, we divide the subconscious into three functions. One, the magnetic mind or wise mind, the traumatic mind or reservoir of all experience pain, and the genetic mind or animal mind. This I have observed. This is not coming from uh, other books. I have observed this. Now, the magnetic mind, or wise mind, is the creative mind. It's a wonderful mind, and this is the mind that I use to create with, you know, poetry, books, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> if you are in the proper frame of mind, and you are in this creative aspect of it, you will notice that the first part of it is concentration. You need to concentrate very, very strongly on the thing that you want to do. Uh, let's say you're trying to write a poem, you would concentrate on the subject of the poem. Then you go into the second phase, which would be meditation. However, that word has been so prostituted that I don't use meditation, I use mediatention through the process of attention, which is what meditation means. It doesn't mean to contemplate the navel and go into the heavens. It simply means through attention. So the second aspect would be to get to the point of paying attention in what you're working on and you go into a state which I call just being. You are just there. You don't even know where you are. You simply are there with that thing in mind. And then comes the third step, which is contemplation, where you then observe what you will, will eventually write down, if it's a poem or a painting or whatever, or a book or whatever. So that is number 23. Now we go to number 24. Reason is the ability to see the difference between things, ideas, or whatever, and choose the one or ones that will enhance one's survival, that makes one's life better. It depends a lot on intelligence. Number 25. Intelligence is the ability to observe exactly what is in front of one and to get a response from it. It is somewhat dependent on memory. The better the intelligence, the better the reason. Number 26. In reasoning as to what will make our lives better, we often make mistakes. These mistakes are mostly dependent on a faulty intelligence. Either the intelligence doesn't see exactly what is in front of it, or its values have been prostituted in the form of lies implanted in one by others. The ability to reason is perfect unless its computations are interfered with by the problems in number 26 and 28, which is coming up. 26, of course, would be the um, uh, depending on a faulty intelligence. Number 28 would be, in the past 2,000 years, our heads have been filled with lies by others in order to control us. Number 29, in this book manual or in this course, you will learn to discover those lies and this alone will bring you freedom. 30, the biggest lie of all is that man-woman is totally controlled by exterior powers. 
powers of heaven and hell, and powers of leaders. Number 11. These lies have kept us at the effect of life, as if life were a very difficult thing, when in fact it isn't. 32. In this manual, or course, we learn to become the cause in life, rather than the effect. Number 33. Evolvement in a human being is his, her nearness to a purified state. In other words, a state of no lies, for one sees and deals with what is. One then reasons perfectly. 34. As soon as one recognizes the lies and conditioning in his, her conscious and subconscious minds, she, he becomes evolved. Number 35, a spiritual, spiritual freedom is simply the attainment of a high degree of evolvement. 36, as one implements honesty with self and reality, she, he will see that she, he is not a dummy, as the present and uh, progressive civilization would force him, her, to believe. Number 37, Non-dummies can see, can focus attention, and can generally observe what is in front of them, and thus reason rationally based on what is, not stories of tradition circulating around for the past 3,000 years. So a small number of us suspect that there is a way out of our slavery, and thus we are the ones who join self-empowerment self courses of this nature. 39. In doing so, we are after health, personal power, wealth, love, and sex. If you have these in quantity, you are happy. What more could you want? 40. The lies existent in health today are horrendous. Practically all health advice today is based on specious principles. 41. Personal power is demonstrated everywhere with the object of taking your money and confounding you to the extent of believing that you have to be other than who you are in order to fit in and be successful. 42. Well, well, think of a wild animal, animal that hasn't eaten in a week. It will stop at nothing to fill its belly. 43. Love today is nothing but sweet, tasty morsels of spiritual nothings that perverted personal power uses to make you obedient. 44. Sex is the no-no game invented by the church, the authorities, and sick people. It is the game of the show but don't touch, or you'll go to jail or hell. Number 45. Those of us magnetists who are students of the personal magnetism home study course on all human abilities become aware of all this in a simple way, smile, and become quiet supermen and superwomen. We magnetists, creators of the new world, discover that excellent health is relatively easy to have. We don't depend on doctors except in an emergency, and there are few of these of these emergencies because we are fully conscious of every minute. We magnetists enjoy personal power, for we long ago began using ruthless and brutal discipline with ourselves. We have been exigent with ourselves to the point where others become cross-eyed, but we hurt no one. We are rationally selfish, but we hurt no one. I think the time is up, so we're going to end off here with number 47. Until we see each other again, thanks for listening.